We spoke to a number of our writers against racism recently, Gary yeah. Young and Daniel Trillin, about the way that immigration is discussed yeah. in politics and in the media. Mm -hmm. What needs to change for a more informed um, and balanced debate about immigration? Um, immigration, um, yes. Um, I, I, I think, I think there, there will inevitably be tensions when um, there is big migration because uh, the indigenous population will, will tend to feel threatened. So we shouldn't be surprised that, that there are tensions. I, I think the, obviously at, at, a, at one level, um, we need to recognize what we have in common. The trade unions need to organize and, and welcome in migrant workers and demand for them the minimum wage. Um, and the minimum wage needs to be the living wage, so that no one lives living in, in poverty. Um, we need a programme of full employment, um, which means that you've got to have a planned, a planned economy, cause, because in, in this neoliberal economy you will never get that. So a neoliberal economy will, will always look for cheap labour, it will look for migrant workers, it will pay them little, that will then cause tensions with indigenous workers who, who want a proper wage. So the present economic model will always cause tensions, will always cause problems. Um, I think, I think we, migration will, will come for economic reasons and political reasons. So for example in the European Union, we need a different kind of European Union that will that will have an economic policy that will that will equalise the wealth of different countries, because if if there are countries that are desperately poor, then of course people will look to, to travel to find work. So we need a, a program in, of investment in those poor countries on behalf of the the people who live there, um, that is based on common ownership, where the wealth that's generated goes to the people, doesn't go to big corporations. So we need a whole new European Union. We need to stop interventionist wars that have caused you know, great migration problems. Obviously in the Middle East this is a huge issue now, mm -hmm. with people living in refugee camps desperate to escape. Um, so as long as we pursue wars of intervention, as long as we have an unequal relationship between different countries, there will be migration. Migration will give tensions and we have to see the bigger picture and, and deal with the bigger issues. And two of your films uh, did touch on immigration and particularly with, mm. with reference to jobs um, and wages, but also a lot of your films explore political and social issues mm. at a very personal level. Mm. And why is this kind of storytelling such a good way of encouraging people to think about issues in a, a different way? Well, I, I think it's very difficult to um, to connect to abstract ideas and abstract statistics. You know, you can read of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people in a certain situation, but confronted with a fellow human being, you know, you, you identify, you identify, you think, well, that could be me, you know, a family with nowhere to live, um, people separated from their children because they can't support them. Um, our natural instinct is to help, is to support, is to, to be a good Samaritan, whatever. Um, and I think that's, that's what we have to build on. We have to build on our, the, the, the best parts of our response and we have, to, we have to explain and understand why people respond, react in a hostile way and remove the causes for that hostility. Um, so I think yeah, the personal stories can link you to a wider problem. And, and we try and use the experience of role models to talk to young people about racism, and certainly through mm -hmm. footballers we do that a lot. And looking mm -hmm. for Eric, touched on the influence of, of role models. You yourself are a football supporter. Mm -hmm. um, why does football continue to be so important to so many people? Um, I mean, fo fo football is, um, is hugely important. Um, it's, um, I mean, it's a brilliant game, so that's the main thing. I mean, it's great, it, it excites, it excites 
you know, players and spectators alike. Um, it's um, it's a great gymnasium for our emotions. You know, you go from from despair to triumph. You know, within within a few moments, and then back again. And the, so, um, it it's uh, it, it's a great it's a great thing. It's a great sport. It's a great, and both a player and spectator. Um, but also, um, when one team travels to me play another team, then you you make connections with that with that other with that other other group, those other supporters, um, and uh, well, you um, you can shout abusive comments across the terraces, and the wit and wisdom of football supporters knows no bounds. Nevertheless, at base, I think you all know. What you have in common is greater than what divides you. you know, you're all you're all supporters, and um, so so when people come from other countries and they bring their team, then you can make really good links. Supporters Direct have been very good in this, and um, I think they've done great work um, in making making football belong to the supporters, which is what it should do. It shouldn't belong to the great oligarchs and wealthy businessmen, it should belong to the supporters. And supporters meeting supporters, you find what you have in common. On the, on the film then, is it true that Steve Rebecca didn't know the Camp Nou was going to be in the film until he <laughs> appeared in the scene? Yes, um, Steve, Steve, Steve didn't know that uh, Eric um, Cantor was actually going to be in. He knew he was involved, and obviously he knew it was about Eric Cantor, but he didn't, um, he didn't know he was going to be in it. So we had to we had to. Um, we were shooting in a room a bit like this, actually. Um, we had to build a, a sort of black tent around the camera, and uh, set Steve. Steve a, smokes a lot, far too much, really. And so we sent Steve. Steve went out and had a cigarette. Eric nipped in behind, under the tent around the camera. Um, Steve was then came back in. Was playing the scene. He had to turn away from the camera. When he turned away, Eric um, popped out from bit from the black tent around the camera and was present in the room. So Steve had a mighty shock when he turned around to be confronted by the, the magical figure of Eric Cantona. It's good to get that, that surprise reaction in yeah, yeah. on the yeah. camera. Um, I read also that um, Kez is on the BFI's top 50 films to see before your 14 list. <laughs> um, as well as the same organisation's top ten British films list. I wondered if there was a film that you would recommend to young people of that age that they should definitely watch. Um, oh, I don't know. It's really difficult, actually. Um, I'm, not, I'm not very good at remembering films. <laughs> I mean, the film that was important to us uh, was a film called 400 Blows by François Truffaut. Um, and uh, there are many films that I, I hugely admire and enjoy. Um, you've stumped me a bit on on, on, the, on an under 14 one. I don't know, my mind goes blank. <laughs> <laughs> Was there one a film that you saw around that time that had a big impact on you? Um, no, I, I used to go to the theatre. Mm -hmm. I, I wasn't a great film goer as a kid. I, I, more when I was 17, 18, I started to go. 16, 17, 18. I mean, I lived in Nuneaton, a mm. um, town in the Midlands that the trains tend to go through without stopping. And um, we lived quite near Stratford on Avon, so I used to cycle to the Shakespeare Theatre there and watch Shakespeare um, when I was a teenager. Well, the bizarre thing for a teenager to do, but that, that, that's what um, inspired me to, you know, to do this kind of work, um, along with going to Nuneaton Borough. Which, um, which is also full of heroes. Mm. What are you working on next? Um, it's a, a film called Jimmy's Hall, and it's set in the 1930s in Ireland. And it's about um, a man called Jimmy Grelton, who was a, a real person. He, um, he and, his, and a group um, opened a dance hall on their own land. Um, which didn't have the approval of the church, and so the church tried to close it down. And uh, Jimmy was also very political, supported um, 
farmers who'd been evicted because they couldn't pay the rent and um, other political issues and so the great and the good of the time were against him so they the story of the struggle is uh, the stories of the struggle to keep the hall open against the powers that be including the church and the wealthy um, and the, it's about that